Mitchell Levy, global credibility expert, and we're at the favorite time that I have in the week, and that's talking to a very important person on leaders living their values. And today we have Mindy Gibbons Klein, and I'm so excited to have Mindy with us. Hey, Mindy, how are you? I'm great, Mitchell. Great to be here. Oh, good. Well, it's great to have you. So I am, uh, the, the first question I give is sort of this softball question, and I'd like to be able to say, Mindy, who are you? <laughs> well, I'm a native New Yorker who moved to the UK. I'm a caring entrepreneur. I'm passionate about justice and all kinds of opportunities for good people. Wow. I like that. What's a caring entrepreneur? I think it's, uh, it's something quite difficult to explain. It's just a feeling of caring about other people and always being entrepreneurial, looking for creative and innovative ways uh, for people to live their best life and, and to get a good ROI on their efforts. What does it mean? It I, I'm curious, if you're helping other people live their best lives, what does that mean? Well, I feel that I was put here on this earth to live my best life. Um, I don't know if everybody feels that way, but, you know, life is a gift. I'm with you. So, I'm with you. Yeah. I, I, I buy into that. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm here to set an example. Um, I'm here to pave the way for others. And, you know, I've been very blessed. So I like sharing my abundant blessings and energy with people and just creating the maximum number of opportunities for fulfillment, abundance, and, and opportunities for everyone. Because, you know, left to chance, not everybody gets a chance. Interesting. What was going through my mind as you're speaking is is for us as humans our thoughts on what abundance might be for ourselves will be different than other people's thoughts on what abundance is for them so it's trying to think about how to ask the right question <laughs> is is what does that mean as a caring entrepreneur trying to pro provide abundance with others for others how, how do you go about doing that what does that mean well, it is about asking questions and you and I both love chatting, but also listening. And I, I listen not just with my ears, but when I'm with somebody or on a Zoom or, you know, even if I'm on a stage, I can listen to specific people in the audience. And I know because I've seen it hundreds of times that most people limit themselves. They have what we call in, in, in the self-help world limiting beliefs uh and it's uh it's nobody's fault it's just you know they maybe never thought any bigger and you're absolutely right not everybody has the same definition or the same goal but sometimes people just don't know what's possible and and i really really like pulling the curtain open and showing them hmm. give me an example of of how a conversation like that might start when you start when when somebody comes to you and they they're ready for whatever oh well let's talk about so what do you do how do you support and then uh and, and, well, and we'll start there and then we'll 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 do our comp we'll we'll do that conversation so sure no problem but i mean of course you know because you and i have known each other for a long time <laughs> um but for everybody else uh, my passion is helping experts who want to give back to create truly fault leading legacy books and that drives me i've been in that business in one way or another for 20 years uh so what happens is a lot of people when they hear that they're like oh i'd like to write a book but they either say but or they're thinking but and they they have all the excuses and reasons why they can't do it it's not going to happen and so i can listen out for that even if they don't say it because, you know, writing a book, it's like, well, you know, it's, it's a big, big goal for many people, a bucket list item, something like running a marathon or climbing a mountain or 
moving to another country. I've only done two of those things, by the way. Uh, and when you have something really big and scary on the list, it's just human nature to kind of do a little step back. You know, we do this little dance, you know, oh, I want to go for it, but, you know, we hold ourselves back and most people don't even realize they are. So I love asking the coaching questions and being respectful. I don't say, ah, oh, come on, you know, you don't know. <laughs> you know we're just, um, how about this? How about that? You know, what what did you want when you were younger? And, you know, we lose touch with these things, uh, but really kind of probing around the limiting belief. Um, and and it's, so, it's just so wonderful and fulfilling when I see somebody, the light bulb go on, I see in their eyes, they actually believe they can do something that maybe five minutes earlier they didn't think they could do. Mm. By the way, there's nothing cooler in the world than and seeing that. I, I always call it the aha moment, but seeing that light bulb pop, right? When they go, oh yeah, I get, I love that. Now you've done this 400 times, right? You've helped bring 400 books to, to life. Is that the right number or? We are up to a thousand. So someone gave you a an thousand. Old where did that 400 come from? A thousand. Well, that's know. awesome. We, we were at 400 at some point. Um, now we we stopped counting, but we did we did get to over a thousand. And it's not really about that because for each person, it's about their book. <laughs> so you know, but but it is it is it is something. When I look back and think, we're about to celebrate 20 years of my business. It's it's a big deal. I sort of wasn't thinking, oh, I'm going to run a business for 20 years. It just kind of went day by day, week by week, month by month, year, decade, you know, <laughs> two decades. And we're celebrating it, as you know. Um, and it seems a little bit surreal to me. Hmm. All right. So values. Um, yes. You were put on this earth to to create an abundant life, live abundant life for yourself and to help others. Correct. You're a good listener. A good listener and a good question asker. So I am curious because this is something that I do. Sometimes people come to me because because, you know, we both uh, we, we do books as well. We're more on the co-creation process. And I think on your side, tell me again, what's your what's your process? What's the bit if I if I'm gonna bucket the the do it yourself, do it with you, do it for you? Um, I, I think I know where you go, but why don't you talk about what what you do with people? Certainly. So um, I'm really proud of our brand, the thought <laughs> what am I saying, the thoughtful leader, the book midwife, <laughs> our other brand. The book midwife, it, it's a metaphor, I'm not a real midwife. And the goal is to coach somebody through the frameworking and structure and development of the idea, the concept or conception, and then to coach them through the drafts so that they write their own book to answer your question with guidance, direction, accountability, coaching, kick up the backside, whatever they need, and, but they write it. And that's a really important part of our process or process for my friends in the UK and Canada. <laughs> okay, so you're you're in the middle of talking to somebody and they they share with you their their book idea. Are you allowed to have an opinion of whether or not you like it or don't like it? I don't know about allowed, but that's that's <laughs> not really my job. No, I mean it's it's who cares if I like it or don't like it? And if they ask me if it's a good idea or not, or if it'll do well or not, I don't have a crystal ball. And so I, it, I don't get involved in any of those discussions. I will not answer, you know, is it any good? Who am I to say, and who knows? Really, it's the market that decides, and that's always been the case. So until they choose to do it and actually do it and launch it, then they they can't achieve anything and when it's out there who knows actually you and i know that the books that do really well are the ones that are marketed well as well as being a good book but marketing is a big part of it so and i i, I really aim to teach them that they don't need to look outside for that kind of validation they don't they don't need 
my approval or you know blessing on their idea now if they want a structure if they want somebody to make sure that the book ends up tight and right you know the right length and style tone balance everything then that's what we can provide but it's it's their idea and and i'm really here to empower people not disempower them so is the book for typically the the authors you work with with a done with you model is what you're doing so the authors you work with typically what's the goal of the book what do they what do they want out of it so we spoke about this um, a number of weeks ago on my podcast and you know that i'm passionate about experts same as you the the issue is somebody doesn't really feel they're an expert many times and the book gives them that tangible credibility I've obviously used one of your favorite words there and behind me i've got a whole bunch of books there are 400 books behind me because there's a lot of my clients books i don't have so maybe that's where that number came from i must have been some, somehow 400 got on my head yeah. and so uh, i was two and a half times less what it really was so my apologies <laughs> Oh, no, 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 it's good fun. I mean, I can't fit a thousand books in this office anyway. Uh, so they want to be known as an expert. And there's lots of ways to build expertise and to showcase your expertise. I like lots of media. I love this. I love video. I love the podcasts that we do. I love writing blogs and real short form Twitter, you name it. There's something about a book and I'm, I'm not going to disturb the video by grabbing one, but you know, it's tangible. You can feel it. It's, it's evidence. It's proof that you know what you're talking about. And that's what people want. You know, I, I, I've got books. I could, I could, oh, I could, very I could hang out books of different people. This is Marshall Goldsmith's book. This is one of the books we published. Um, you know, Steve Rogers. I mean, yeah, it, there's something absolutely beautiful about holding a, you know, holding a, holding a book in hand and saying, this is you. Yeah. I want to, so now that we got here, let me ask a different question. A lot of times what happens is, because you and I, we work with the same audience. We work with experts who want, who, who are essentially going to use the book to demonstrate incremental credibility. Now, they typically, when I look at them, they're typically using the book to drive more speaking or to drive more, business in some way, whether it's a product or a service. And and what I was getting at before is what happens when an expert comes to you and you know, you, you sort of know based on their expertise, based on the marketplace, kind of the, the book that's going to help them increase their business going forward, a little bit more abundance. And they come to you and, and they say, I want to do a book on, and it's some history thing they've done in the past and you know they're not going to market it they're not going to do anything they're just going to do it because there's this knowledge in their head that they feel like they need to get on book are you allowed to, so so for me i'm going to say for me i have an opinion <laughs> i i discourage i discourage that and actually typically won't work with somebody if i know their book won't be successful if they if it doesn't create abundance and so that's when i said are you allowed it, it's not like anyone's giving us permission or not, but do you allow yourself to share with somebody if if their book idea is one that may not create the abundant life that you feeling like you could if they did a different topic? Do you have that level of conversation with your, with your clients? Right. right. Thank you for clarifying. I do have a bunch of coaching questions that I wheel out at the right time. And what occurs to me is uh, I usually ask them what it is they're trying to achieve. And I ask them, once this book is out, are you going to be speaking on this topic? Are you going to, because it could be that they want to pivot. I worked with somebody who was in their seventies and they were writing about something that was not their expertise, but they were ready to retire and they wanted to go around doing speaking engagements based on the new topic. Who am I to tell them that they can't or shouldn't? So when I said, you know, I don't have the crystal ball, I, I, I mean it, I have no idea how they will do. Uh, it's also not really up to me to decide on, you know, if, if they're gonna be successful. You know, a moment ago, I, I said, I'm working with people who want to give back and leave a legacy. 
So that's become more important that, you know, it's, it's, I've kind of left the world, not left, but I do less in the world of pure entrepreneurship. This book is going to open a door. This book is going to lead to higher fees, more speaking gigs. Yeah, we, we do that, obviously. But the, I, I only work with three clients at a time. It's very exclusive. And because of that, I get to choose the people who choose to do that, 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 leave my legacy is helping other people leave their legacy. So mm. I don't, uh, yeah, I, I'm in a slightly different space now. And I've realized that that, you know, that's where I feel I can add the most value. I love that. So, so just in terms of living your values, you've made a decision on in terms of your workspace and how much time that you're going to limit it to three clients at a time. Well, I do a lot of speaking. I do training. I do my own writing. I write music. I have a life. I like lying in the sun. I like traveling. So it fits with the life that I like to run. Mind you, I am starting to get involved in some more businesses. I have to hold myself back. But the, in terms of private client work, what I think is uh, important to remember is, you know, these, if somebody's never written a book before and they don't believe they can do it, and we go from that doubt and really limiting beliefs like we were talking about to the other side where they've done their book and they have that proof, it is an unbelievable transformation. And, and in my case, yes, they write that book themselves, every word, and it, that's the kind of client who I tend to work with. You know, there's, there's lots and lots of things that can be done with that book. But uh, in the end of the day, sometimes it's just about the book and they don't care if they're selling it. it it's, a, it's a bucket list item. Um, you know about our 80% initiative? Uh, I'm not sure. In all of my businesses, 80% of the clients have to come from underrepresented groups. And I aim for that number every year. And it's hard to achieve because, with all due respect, <laughs> it's the straight middle-aged white man who tends to step up with more confidence. And I'm here to open the door and make sure people know that door is open from all the other groups, gender, race, ability and disability, um, sexual orientation, you name it. I want nice. to make sure that we level the playing field because like I said before, left to chance, some people don't always get a chance. Where did that stem from that, the, that 80%? What, what, what precipitated that? Why, why is that important to you? Well, I looked at my own client list at one point and it was all white men. And I hadn't actually done anything to attract any specific uh, sector, or, but that's what happened. And so that was left to chance. That's what happened. And I, I, I didn't think that looked right, you know, being female and seeing that, especially in the business book world where I was operating, um, you know, women want to run businesses and don't only want to read books written by men. And, and, you know, sometimes people say, well, it doesn't matter if it's man or woman. There really wasn't a lot of representation. And I, I just wanted to take a look at that, redress the balance, create more opportunities, and make sure people knew about those opportunities. And then if somebody's from one of those groups and they don't see bookshelves filled with books written by people who look like them, they tend to think, they're not going to have a chance. And so they don't even go for it. So then I have an extra job, which I don't mind doing. I spend most of my time trying to encourage people to go for opportunities that they don't know or don't think they can go for. It's, it's, it just drives me. And if somebody goes for it and they, they try their best and they, they don't succeed, fine. But when people don't even try, mm. I, I just feel that I have an obligation to, to, as I say, open that door and help them step through it. Yeah. 
can could you give an example without talking about names of 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 someone who was teetering and you were able to 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 get them to walk through that door somebody just leapt right into my mind she was um was is a black lady who was in a an abuse of a subtly abusive relationship very underconfident very soft softly spoken really wasn't sure if she could write a book um and wanted to do this to to prove something to herself she ended up getting divorced she ended up losing a lot of weight she was overweight she ended up bringing out a book that is stunning in terms of the way it's written and the subtleties and it it improved her confidence no end and you know it was it was like a complete transformation and mm. I I feel really lucky to have been part of that, played a small part or a big part. Uh, I, I've you know tried to give her extra opportunities. You know these times when uh, you're doing a slideshow and and you know you choose which books you can have. You can't put all one thousand on the slide. You know just to showcase her book a little bit more. She spoke at an event uh, that I was in charge of. I, you know it just it just warms my heart. Hmm. And how did, how did she come by? So I guess the question is, how did she come by you? And then when you first started interacting, what was that thing? Like, what did you do to start making her feel like she can like get, get, getting over that, whether it's imposter syndrome or whatever it is, what did, what did you do that sort of opened up the possibilities for her? Well, she was referred to me, and I think about 99% of my clients are referred by somebody I've met. As I say, I've been doing this nonstop for 20 years, and we know a lot of people by now. And uh, she, she was kind of semi-convinced because of the introducer, this person we both know. But really, I could tell that she was very shy and hesitant and underconfident so i can't remember exactly we're talking quite a few years ago i think i was probably you know very gentle gently probing just you know talking about different options and um encouraging her to at least write it and not think about the publishing i know i know we said that many times people come and they're asking me a million questions about publishing and my stock answer is look how about you get the book written and then we'll look at the publishing because that's one way to do it. Many people spend hours and hours and weeks and years and way too much time trying to figure out how they're going to get published and their book is at risk of never being written. So, you know, I, I don't really engage in any conversation about publishing unless there's a finished manuscript. That's my rule. I'm so glad you, you brought that up. Yeah. It's yeah, because it's about what you're doing is you're everything you're doing is reinforcing the values you mentioned at the beginning. If you want somebody to be uh, more abundant, to be more confident, to be able to live the life they have, focusing on the what happens after you write is so less important <laughs> than okay, yeah. let's write, let's make sure you write from your heart, you write from what's important to you, and I. I appreciate you saying that. It was very valuable for people to hear. It doesn't mean they're going to listen, <laughs> but it was very good of you to say. Well, uh, if they ever want to have a chat with me, at least they know where they stand. <laughs> oh, perfect. And we'll 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 give you a chance to uh, to share that at the end. Sure. I'm curious, based on how this conversation has gone, is there a particular question that I should have asked you that I didn't? Well, we've alluded to it, uh, but I would like you to ask me, when should people contact you, Mindy? Oh, ask that you cut off at the end, sound wise. Uh, like when, when should people contact you, Mindy? Oh, <laughs> okay. I can ask that question. Okay. Um, Mindy, when should people contact you? 
Thank you for asking that excellent question, Mitchell. <laughs> um, You're welcome. As early as possible, before any writing takes place, before any planning takes place, before any big decisions take place. In fact, before you even think you're ready. That's when I like working with people. The saddest thing is when somebody comes to me and they've been working away at something for a year, two years, five years in some cases, and they've got a mess and they're not sure about it. And that, you know, we either have to unravel it, which is not fun for any of us, or they start over, which really hurts as they feel they've in, wasted that time. And, and uh, so if I can catch people early, then we have all the possibilities and options open to us and they haven't got those blinders or blinkers on. So it, it's much easier for everybody and rewarding. Yeah. I, I did do have a, what's next for you? What's what you said you have a bunch of opportunities and things going on. I just, I heard your answer. Thank you for that. And I agree with you, by the way, if you're listening to this, watching this, um, the best time to speak to a developmental editor or a, uh, someone as, as well-rounded to have done a thousand books like Mindy is as early as possible. Um, what's next for you? Well, I sold my publishing company and I am still involved in books, but I have a lot more time for my other pursuits. So I've got the Thoughtful Leader podcast and my book and the Thoughtful Leader trainings, uh, but I even have more time than that. So I have dedicated myself to looking for board positions where I can help companies who are trying to grow and build things up and exit and they can, they can learn from what I've done. And believe me, it was not always straightforward. I made a, a lot of mistakes and it took me 10 years to sell the company. So I'd like to help other companies avoid that pain. Um, but also, you know, I just have, I'm thrilled about getting involved in different sectors. I've only really been in marketing and publishing and tech. So there's a whole wide world open to me and I'm excited about diversifying my portfolio. Mm. Ah, I love that. So listen, if you're listening or you're watching and this is of interest to you and you're thinking about wanting to have a conversation with, with someone like Mindy or specifically Mindy Gibbons Klein, Mindy, how best can people reach out to you? Well, the book midwife is our brand so on twitter it's at book midwife and or somebody can just google the book midwife um my website is mindygk.com because people would always spell my name wrong um so it ended up being mindygk.com and uh i think the book midwife website is showing thank you very much to your team uh yeah i, I i'm very easy to find online i think i'm the only mindy gibbons client in the world <laughs> it's good to have a name that's unique. Yeah. Mindy, thank you so much for spending uh, spending time with us today. It's been my pleasure. Hey, and, and this is now the right time of the podcast. If you're still here, this is now time for you to spread some cred dust. So write down the aha moment that, that really, in, in whatever platform you're watching, write down the aha moment that attracted you. Um, share with your friends, click on the like button, and we'll see you at the next episode of Leaders Living Their Values. Thanks so much. Take care.